The stage was set in the frosty era of the Cold War, a time of relentless tension between the two superpowers, the United States and the Soviet Union. This period in history, which spanned from the close of World War II in 1945 until the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991, was marked by a bitter ideological battle between capitalism and communism, each vying for global dominance. The United States, led by the charismatic and youthful President John F. Kennedy, championed the ideals of democracy and capitalism. On the other side, the Soviet Union, under the stern and formidable Nikita Khrushchev, stood as the bastion of communism. In the Caribbean Sea, just 90 miles off the coast of Florida, the island nation of Cuba, under the fiery revolutionary leader Fidel Castro, emerged as a new ally for the Soviets. The tensions between the two superpowers were not merely ideological. They manifested in a series of political and military confrontations around the world, often involving other nations drawn into the vortex of this global power struggle. One of the most significant of these was the failed Bay of Pigs invasion in 1961, where a CIA-sponsored force of Cuban exiles attempted to overthrow Castro. The botched operation only served to push Cuba closer to the Soviet Union and further heighten tensions. As the superpowers jostled for supremacy the world watched anxiously, aware that any misstep could tip the balance and plunge humanity into a devastating nuclear war. The stakes were high, the players were in position and the world was anxiously watching, waiting, for the next move. The Cold War stage had been set, and the world was about to witness a crisis that would change the course of history. On October 14, 1962, the world was jolted awake by a shocking discovery. A seemingly ordinary day turned into a moment of profound global concern, as American U-2 spy planes, soaring high above the Caribbean, stumbled upon an alarming sight. Soviet nuclear missiles in Cuba, a mere 90 miles from the American coast. These were no ordinary weapons. Each missile carried the potential to unleash a power 1,000 times greater than the bomb dropped on Hiroshima, and they were strategically positioned to reach major American cities within minutes. The stakes couldn't have been higher. The discovery was a game-changer in the Cold War chess match between the United States and the Soviet Union. It was a bold, audacious move by the Soviets. The American mainland had never been in direct threat until now. The balance of power was suddenly tipped, and the U.S. was abruptly thrust into the crosshairs of potential nuclear destruction. In the days following the shocking discovery, a flurry of activity ensued behind the closed doors of the White House. President John F. Kennedy and his advisors grappled with the looming crisis, struggling to devise a response that would neutralize the threat without triggering a nuclear war. The tension was palpable, as the fate of millions hung in the balance. Meanwhile, the American public remained blissfully unaware of the imminent danger. It was a stark reminder of the secret maneuvers and silent battles that characterized the Cold War. For the men and women going about their daily lives, it was just another October day. Little did they know, their world was on the brink of being changed forever. The discovery of these missiles, hidden away in the tropical paradise of Cuba, was a stark wake-up call. It revealed the terrifying reality of the nuclear age, that at any moment, without warning, life as we know it could be obliterated. The discovery of these missiles brought the world to the brink of nuclear war. This was the Cuban Missile Crisis. As the world held its breath, a delicate dance of diplomacy and military power began. This third act of the Cuban Missile Crisis played out far from the public eye, but the repercussions would be felt around the globe. President Kennedy was faced with a dilemma. He had to remove the threat posed by the Soviet missiles in Cuba, but without provoking a nuclear war. His decision? A naval blockade? Or as it was diplomatically termed, a quarantine? The U.S. Navy was tasked with preventing any more missile-carrying ships from reaching Cuba. It was a show of force, yet it also left room for negotiation. On the other side of the Iron Curtain, Soviet Premier Nikita Khrushchev was under immense pressure. He had hoped to bolster Cuba's defenses and shift the balance of power, but now he risked igniting a war that could destroy everything. The challenge for him was to find a way out of the crisis without appearing weak. As ships from both superpowers converged in the Caribbean, secret negotiations began. The world watched in suspense, unaware of the frantic diplomacy unfolding behind closed doors. Kennedy and Khrushchev exchanged a series of letters, each carefully worded to avoid escalation while still asserting their respective positions. The tension was palpable. Kennedy, a young president, was tested in ways no other American leader had been before. 
His decision-making was under scrutiny, not just from his own people and allies but also from his adversaries. He was walking a tightrope, balancing the need to protect national security with the imperative of avoiding nuclear war. Meanwhile, Khrushchev found himself in a precarious situation. His audacious gamble had backfired, and he was now in a corner. He had to find a way to de-escalate the situation without losing face. The Soviet leader was forced to think on his feet, with the fate of millions hanging in the balance. Throughout these tense days, the world was oblivious to just how close it was to the brink. As Kennedy and Khrushchev navigated this dangerous game, they were acutely aware that they held the power to plunge the world into a nuclear holocaust. In this high-stakes game of chess, one wrong move could have tipped the world into a nuclear holocaust, yet, it was also a testament to the power of diplomacy. Even in the face of the most severe crisis, dialogue remained possible. And it was this dialogue, however strained and fraught with danger, that eventually pulled the world back from the brink. The Cuban Missile Crisis serves as a stark reminder of the horrors of nuclear war, but also the importance of diplomatic engagement, even between the fiercest of enemies. The world exhaled on October 28, 1962, as Khrushchev agreed to remove the missiles but the impact of the crisis was far-reaching. The Cuban Missile Crisis had ended. The imminent threat of nuclear war was staved off, but the aftershocks of this seismic event reverberated across the globe, etching indelible marks on the terrain of international relations. From the ashes of this near-apocalyptic confrontation, a new order began to take shape. Recognizing the need for swift and clear communication to prevent future misunderstandings that could escalate into crises, the United States and the Soviet Union established a direct hotline. This teletype link, a symbol of the need for dialogue even amidst the deepest divisions, was a significant stride towards ensuring that the world would never again stand on the brink of nuclear annihilation due to a lack of communication. But the Cuban Missile Crisis wasn't just a wake-up call for the superpowers, it was a clarion call for the entire world. The chilling reality of the crisis underscored the urgent need for nuclear disarmament. It sparked a renewed momentum in the pursuit of arms control agreements. The Partial Test Ban Treaty of 1963, prohibiting nuclear tests in the atmosphere, outer space and underwater, was one of the first tangible outcomes of this renewed commitment. It was a small but significant step towards the larger goal of a world free from the terror of nuclear weapons. Yet the most profound impact of the Cuban Missile Crisis, perhaps lies in the lessons it imparted. Lessons about the power of diplomacy and negotiation about the importance of clear communication in averting misunderstandings, and about the need for cool-headed decision-making in times of crisis. It taught us that in the nuclear age, brinkmanship is not just a dangerous game, it's a potential death sentence for humanity. The image of a world teetering on the edge of nuclear war served as a stark reminder of the devastating potential of these weapons and the importance of preventing their use at all costs. The Cuban Missile Crisis wasn't just a chapter in the annals of the Cold War, it was a turning point in human history. It brought us face to face with the unimaginable horror of nuclear war, forcing us to reckon with our own capacity for self-destruction. But it also showed us the possibility of change, the potential for diplomacy to triumph over aggression, communication over misunderstanding, and hope over fear. The Cuban Missile Crisis serves as a stark reminder of the devastating potential of nuclear war and the importance of diplomacy, negotiation and communication in the face of conflict. It's a lesson from history that continues to resonate today, a reminder of the thin line between peace and war, and a call to ensure that we never again find ourselves on the brink of annihilation.